So did you, did you, how did you come across ketogenic diets and fasting in that three years? You were just reading the literature or, and did you start to try this yourself and do your own N equals ones and, and what, what? Yeah, well, of course I started on myself. I, I, I don't remember, people ask me this, I don't remember how I first got into it. I think I had a couple of friends who maybe have mentioned it, mentioned it or, or through a few videos. Some of the earlier videos I remember seeing definitely were from Dominic D'Agostino and Thomas Seyfried, who I'm sh- uh, both of who are excellent uh, researchers, and I've uh, you know I've met them both. They're really nice people too, and I'm sure you know who they are. Mm. So uh, probably that influenced me, and Jason Fung influenced me a lot. His stuff um, I was onto at a very um, early time when he came out with this obesity code book. Um, but I guess um, yeah, after that I, I started N of one experimentation. I think that was kind of neat because I, I just thought to myself, if I'm even going to think about putting a patient on a fasting protocol or a ketogenic diet, and a lot of people are saying there's all these adverse effects, which I now know are false if you do them properly, then uh, I had to do it on myself to the nth degree first. So yes, I've done a lot of um, fasting and keto diet experimentation, including measuring the blood glucose, ketones, lipids, everything. And um, in, in quite a strict form and, uh, and, uh, trying different supplementation forms as well, coconut oil, MCT oil, artificial ketone esters, and so on, just to see what those effects of those things are. And, um, yeah, I, and I guess it for, for myself anyways, the best evidence. Uh, so, uh, I believe in results over facts and I believe in facts over expert opinion in that order, but results are most important. So, I'm still doing the fasting keto today, which is um, quite a number of years later. And I, I guess that uh, has led to a number of good results that I feel and see, uh, certainly on a biochemical level, I see them. And um, so I continue all that to this day. Uh, I'm pretty much always in ketosis. And uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. So I think you mentioned that at the last talk I saw you do that you were about to go away diving on a dive holiday and you were going to fast for some period of time that I don't recall. How, did you end up doing that fast and how long was it for and how, how did you feel? Yes, I did. So yeah, last time I saw you, I was uh, going on my my first international trip really in th- almost three years to the Maldives and I just went there for two weeks. And uh, what I always do when I travel on a flight to Canada or anywhere else in the world is I do a, a multi-day fast. I do not eat during the flight. First of all, it saves me from having to eat the airplane food. <laughs> and second of all, I find I can com- almost completely mitigate jet lag uh, I, by doing a three, four, five-day fast. In this case, I did sort of a five-day one. And uh, I, then when I get to the new country, so I start the fast a day before I get on the plane. Then I, when I get to the new country, I will time my one meal. I always pretty much eat one meal a day anyways, OMAD. Uh, I will time that one meal for when I would normally eat it, which is normally in the early evening uh, in the new country. And then I find that I do not get the jet lag uh, it, hardly at all. And wow. uh, for diving, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I, I've only been doing it for, I guess, uh, three, four years, but I, I definitely am prone to jet lag if I do not do this. It's mitigated. So the, uh, and of course, I hydrate on the plane, and I'll make sure I take a, a little bit of salt supplementation at some point. So um, when I dive, uh, fasted for four or five days, first of all, I don't tell the diving operators uh, right away. I'm not sure how some of them would feel about it, just the idea of it. But I find that I feel really calm, excellent, and focused under the water, which makes sense. We know these things occur with the multi-day fast. And I'm not... Uh, advocating this for anyone unless you maybe have done a lot of fast too so uh please remember this is something i do and i i wouldn't necessarily recommend you doing this but i find it's very beneficial for me and i find my dive time increases as well uh significantly and um probably there are multiple reasons for that but i enjoy doing the fasts and uh when i dive in particular yeah it's interesting. I've just come off a of five day fast myself. Just I'm, I'm about uh, sixteen hours out of that, so I'm feeling fantastic. And awesome. my wife and I try, try to do that once or twice a year, uh, and we definitely go in awesome. a, in a sort of yep. low carb keto state. So, uh, so this this uh, this idea of increased dive time and time underwater. So I've 
I think one thing that's known is you've got to increase you know, tolerance. I've heard of that, this sort of idea that they would have uh, uh, lab rats and mice that they had on keto and ketosis. They normally euthanize them by putting them in a, a CO2 chamber uh, and that's how they yep. do And sometimes they would open up those up ones and they'd just come running straight out again, uh, which is an interesting observation. And uh, Definitely. I, I mean, uh, not go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, well, and I'd, I'd practice this thing. I'm not sure if you recommend this at all. You probably don't, but we've been driving along and I get to the same point in Auckland, just when you go underneath the, just when you're approaching the Harbour Bridge from the south area and you go underneath this little tunnel at Fanshawe Street and I'd, I'd, I'd mark it there. I'd like, okay, I'd, I'll hold my breath from here and see how far I can get because you, you yep. go around the motorway and you end up on top of the bridge. And, I, you know, at my best, I can get all the way to the, to the top of the Harbour Bridge, which is quite a long way away. And I was always surprised about that. And when I'm out of ketosis, I, it's just astonishing. I'm literally uh, a third of that. And then I'm like, <laughs> so yeah, yeah some, something's no, no, I, I find the same thing. Yeah. I find the exact same thing. And actually uh, in the Maldives, I should mention, I was very lucky. I met the uh, Maldives current record holder for free diving. And he was diving. We, I dove with him pretty much every dive, a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. And he showed he's an excellent scuba diver as well. So he was talking about how, uh, you know, when to get these incredible uh, depths of free diving, like he's sort of been up to 86 meters uh, free diving. And uh, what you do is you have to make your body more tolerant to high, lo uh, high levels of carbon dioxide through, uh, you know, techniques such as what you just mentioned. And then, of course, I was speaking to him about ketosis and how that could even augment that. And he was quite uh, interested in that. So. I, I don't, uh, I'm not surprised by your findings because I find the exact same thing. I cannot hold my breath as long when I'm, uh, say, just doing my normal ketogenic diet one meal a day as compared to day five of a fast. Yeah, I'd always wondered if that was a thing in the in that free diving community to be in fasting and ketosis, but uh, yeah, well, people can uh, it's, tell uh, us about it. Yeah, it's not yeah. to my knowledge. I mean, he was, yeah, he was really kind of... Um, he had tried the ketogenic diet before for a few weeks, but uh, I think he hadn't really. Uh, and this is a thing a lot of professional athletes uh, encounter is is your your performance probably goes down a little bit when you start a keto diet or maybe even an intermittent fasting protocol, like sort of 90, 95 percent for a few weeks or even months. And as a professional athlete, that's difficult to tolerate when you have competitions. You can't tolerate that yeah, adaptation period for too long. Yeah. So. I think a lot of um, uh, times, uh, like, you know, it's someone like uh, Peter Atia, who I think, you know, has described yeah. this, how, you know, he, he found that eventually his performance was as good as it was, or even better on a keto diet. But yeah, definitely for a, num a, a period of time, you're, you have this adaptation period and it's normal, right? You're, you've totally changed the fuel source for your cells and so on. So yeah, I've been yeah, thinking, I think I, about I think that a lot more because I think, yeah. There's, there's a couple of things there, I reckon, because yep. there's, there's obviously getting fat ad adapted. Um, and the athletes I've coached, yeah, uh, the initial period, they you know, can double it, even triple their ability to burn fat at a you know, certain exercise intensity, which is interesting. Um, but, but actually, it, over a, a, quite a long period, like another couple of years, it seems to improve way more. Um, and you did right. I think initially their, their higher end performance where there's glycolytic pathways involved uh, tends to deteriorate. There's sort of some ideas about some enzymes that do that, but it, it definitely recovers. And I reckon it could be a six to nine month process and at least the cyclists and runners and triplets that I've worked with, which is, you know, as you say, it's a pretty long time, but to be not as good as you were. Oh, not, well, you would know better than I. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so, you would know better uh, than I working with uh, athletes, but I, I would say it's uh, at least six to nine months for a high level athlete, probably one or two years. Mm. And so that's a pretty long-term commitment to, to eventually becoming yeah. more awesome. 